On today's episode, we speak with William Porter, owner and principal developer of Rucksack Technology, writer and photographer. You may also recognize him from the unofficial Airtable conference thrown by Chris Dancy in September, where William gave a talk about Stacker. William boasts decades of experience in tech, having started developing in FileMaker for law firms in the 90s. In recent years, he has also been very interested in new data management apps, including Airtable. His knowledge of database development makes for a great conversation about the pros and cons of Airtable's interface and inner workings. Over the years, William has also written for tech publications such as the notable Macworld.com and even reviewed Airtable as a drop-dead easy relational database management system back in 2016. William shares a couple different bases with us today. The first is a house hunting base, which he and his family used together when they were considering a move across their state of Texas. They were able to quickly record homes that they were interested in, rate the ones they liked, and create a calendar of visits when it came time to book them. In addition to his work in tech, William is also a photographer. The second base he shows us is home to his camera equipment, where he can track the items he owns as well as items he wants to sell. Check out the show notes for links to learn more about William. So this is, uh, I thought this might be interesting. This is the same base that I talked about. Can you see this? I'm on a, a great big 28 inch screen here. It may be too big. Is that a problem for you? No, it looks great, I think. Okay, good. Uh, I, uh, people don't really need to see <clears throat> this, this, there's real data here, but it's all, um, it's all public data. Um, mm -hmm. my, uh, my daughter, who used to live here in Dallas with her family and our, our grandchildren, has moved to San Antonio this year. So earlier this year, my wife and I were um, thinking we need to move to San Antonio. We may yet do that. So we started doing some house hunting. We've put that off for a while, but I built this. This is, I think, a nearly perfect use case for Airtable yes. because... This was used only by my wife and me, and actually our daughter was, was accessing it as well. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have any trust issues. And I could work on it on my phone. Mm -hmm. And I put it together very quickly. We showed it to, a, we were working with a wonderful real estate agent. She saw what I was working on one time on my phone, and she asked me to show it to her. I did, she said, that's better than what we have at the office. Yeah. So, um, which, you know, I was, I was very pleased. Now I went on and built the Stacker app that I showed at the conference on top of this, mm -hmm. but I did that mostly to see what Stacker could do. It was, that was not a real app. The app that I used was this, the, the, the native Airtable base. Mm -hmm. And it's very straightforward. Um, well, I've got addresses, addresses can have notes. I had cities that I never did a lot for, but you can see that in, in the various cities, these, some of these are made up for the, for the presentation. Mm -hmm. I could see where the addresses are located. I had some extras. What are the extras? Oh yeah, various things that we wanted. We have an RV, for example. We wanted to know which houses have RV, RV space. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a home layout and users. Um, so this was just, you know, we would go and I would have a, um, a screen where I could add, um, add a new, um, uh, add a new uh, property. And then I would I would go to the um, uh, to the realtor's website mm -hmm. and be able to um, copy the the important information from there, put it in my database, and then I began to rank them. Mm -hmm. So then I could do things like which ones do we like the best? And here's a view with rating equals five, which is you know five stars. That's the best. Mm -hmm. And rating equals four. And what were within a cer certain city? Which ones do we want to view? Then as they would get sold, I'd mark them sold and I could say, oh, here are the ones that got away because somebody bought them and they're no longer available. Mm -hmm. I built a calendar that allowed me to, to start keeping track of when we were supposed to go and visit uh, people. Yeah. Um, what's missing here, and I don't know whether I deleted it or not, but I had a map view at one point and that was also helpful too so that I could take a, a, an address and tell us where we needed to go when we were going to, to look at the, uh, at the property with the real estate agent. Yeah. So it was, uh, you know, all of these filters are very straightforward, the ability to, to edit things. And the relational model here was very simple. Mm -hmm. So this was, d did not require um, any complicated uh, links. Uh, it, it also didn't require any complicated calculations. There's, there's, there we go. I'm sorry, I'm gonna go back. I said I could go on, I could go on, but I'm, this is the promise, the last complaint I'm gonna make about Airtable. 
And I make this one fairly confident that everybody who's used the Airtable formula builder will mm -hmm. agree with me. Mm -hmm. A calculation editor is too small. Yep. <laughs> Um, and it doesn't format things for you. So writing calculations or formulas in Airtable, you pretty much have to get a text editor mm -hmm. to write them and then debug them yeah. uh, before and then just paste them in. Right. And so anyway, this doesn't require a lot of calculations. Um, there may be a few in here, but um, I love the fact that uh, I was able to create some uh, some records very quickly and, you know, it was, it just turned out to be a very, very easy way to put in a fair amount of data and, um, and organize it well. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, that's a really great example and a great use case as well. Right. And it's one that was in my, um, in my review and I remembered it when we started house hunting and I thought, oh, I thought about this as an example. What about actually doing it? And I did it <laughs> and it was a good example. In fact, it was, it was exactly right. Um, that was that's one that's in the uh, in my pro um, workspace. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, uh, I I don't I don't think there's any real data in here. This was something I um, one of my clients. This was this was the first client that I hoped I could talk um, into using Airtable. Mm -hmm. This was a client who was not a law firm. This is from a number of years ago. Um, well, right around I guess 2016 or so. Mm -hmm. The client was a, um, a travel agent who arranged uh, in what are called incentive travel for companies, big companies that give their top salesmen of the year uh, trips around the world. They go to various exciting destinations. And so my client, who became something of a friend, arranged these. He was a guy who traveled constantly all around the world. And I had built a system for him that worked on the web and, and um, as a FileMaker database. Mm -hmm. where he would track all of his sign-ups and where the, what people wanted and what kind of room they preferred at the hotel and on, you know, the days of the trip, did, did, did they want to go golfing or did they want to go shopping and, and so on. All of the data for the trips was in there. But the key thing was they needed to sign up. And Airtable's form feature was something that I showed him. I went and we came very close to, to implementing this. Mm -hmm. It had a problem, but uh, the, the problem was that it, the, time that I was doing this with him, I hadn't yet uh, seen Gareth Prenovost's uh, presentation about, actually, I've been doing this longer than Gareth has. I should, should point that out. He's much, much better than I am, but, uh, but I got there before he did. And I didn't yet, had not yet figured out how to use the ID of the record mm -hmm. to create a URL that allows the user to go back to it. Right. Um, so at this time, my problem with this was, there was a lot of information for my clients, customers to complete in the form, and we couldn't be entirely sure that they would complete it in one session. Right. They might start and then have to go to dinner, and then they'd have to start from scratch. And that was sort of a non-starter. The bigger problem with the project was that my client decided to retire. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he no longer needed the app. But now, with the additions to the Airtable form, the ability to hide things, um, and this trick, uh, that allows the user to sort of bookmark where they were and come back to it. Uh, this is much, much more useful. And if, I, if that guy were still around, I'd be pushing him to consider this because he didn't care about a pretty user interface. And it's not that Airtable is not pretty. I think it's actually quite attractive, mm -hmm. but he would be happy to just see lists of data and he could filter them by his trips. That would all work. That would be a use case for him as a travel agent doing that kind of project traveling, mm -hmm. that would work very well. And the form ability is something that solves a problem that other platforms, including FileMaker, don't have a good solution to. You can put this out in public. FileMaker's licensing makes it a bit, well, makes it much more difficult to put something up on the web and just have people, you know, the general public come to it. Right. Um, there's a way to do that but it involves using the FileMaker API and uh, it's, it's work. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is just drop dead easy. Right. And, um, and suddenly you can have things where people you don't know can come to a, a URL that you give them and enter data. Absolutely. So that I think is another, uh, another brilliant thing about Airtable that, that can be very useful to a lot of people. Um, I've used it for a bunch. There's, there's so many other things here and none, none of them are particularly exciting, 
Um, but um, uh, I've, I've been a photographer and I, I have a lot of camera equipment. So mm -hmm. when I want to sell it and I buy it, use it, and sell it, um, I sell through Amazon, although I'm branching out now. But I keep track of this, the ability to have photos in here, uh, you know, keep track of a, a workflow. So over here on the left, I've got, you know, what are, what are the lenses? What kind of cameras are they? Uh, is it ready for me to sell? Is it, is it not ready? Is it ready but not yet sold? And what's been sold? And, and a gallery showing the various things that I've got to sell. That's another use case for <clears throat> an individual that could be applied, I think, to a small business. Mm -hmm. And it was, again, you know, very easy to very easy to build and very, very useful. So um, I more than once I would take this, uh, I'd be taking a package to the post office and just at the last minute before I sent something off, I'd look on my phone at the base and confirm that I had the address right. Uh, thank goodness I never sent anybody a, you know, a thousand dollar, two thousand dollar camera to the wrong address at all. <laughs> but Airtable helps with that kind of thing. Absolutely. So these are, these are all unambitious uses. Uh, at the conference we saw <laughs> some really remarkable ambitious uses of Airtable mm -hmm. and those kinds of things, the fact that Airtable can do those is really impressive. Yes. Um, but the thing I think that will matter to more users, because some of the stuff we saw at the conference is, is not going to be within the, the reach of your average person who's actually got a job working in a, you know, in a small business. And they've been told, hey, would you build the Airtable base? We hear that it's pretty easy to use. And so the guy's got to do his job or her job and, and build the, the Airtable base. They're not going to become, um, well, actually, that's what I'm, I'm about to say something that we know is not true. More than a few of these people have actually fallen, fallen in love with Airtable. Yes. And they may not be doing it full time at work, but <laughs> they're coming home and doing Airtable. So um, Airtable gets some people who are very enthusiastic about it. And if you're enthusiastic, you can do amazing things. Mm -hmm. Even if you are not so enthusiastic, you can do very useful and impressive things with a minimum of training and a minimum of work. Right. So that's that's the use case that for me has become the the most valuable one. Um, but it's just for me. I mean, for other people with, with more vision than I have, oh, that's, that's, that was just a test. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing I like about Airtable, I build lots and lots of test bases. Mm -hmm. So I go in and I'll just try something out and then delete it. So, um, yeah, it is really great for proof of concept. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's a, a one of its terrific, um, terrific features. Yes. Um, there is one, uh, one of the, I liked it better when they called them add-ons because uh, the word app now has become really ambiguous. Yep. And I don't like calling them apps. There's something that was an add-on that's been around for a while that uh, I don't think I have installed and in, I started using Microsoft Edge, um, but it's the app that allows you to save a web page and write notes about it. It's the just a little add-on for our table that you can install as a plugin in your browser. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's, it's fantastic. You, you can create your own, take it anywhere. And it's, I switch between browsers all the time. Yeah. So I'm always losing my, my bookmarks. And I've tried using Google bookmarks and this app from Airtable was better and easier. <laughs> so I think as more and more people are, are creating apps or add-ons as I'd prefer to call them for Airtable, um, People are going to start using Airtable for because somebody's written a, a clever and useful app. Right. And um, the only trick there is the is the fact that when you start to use the apps, it's not free. So <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the amazing thing about Airtable is how much that you can do with a free account. Absolutely. And that I think is a that's also a major. It's a it's a marketing strength, brilliant idea for marketing. But it's, it's also a way to get people in because some people cannot figure out whether they like a product in two weeks or a month. Right. Some people need six months. I've, in a way, I could say I've taken five years. Yeah. And um, now I'm a paid customer now, but um, 
that's the fact that you can do as much as you can in Airtable for free is, um, you know, and it's it's not for free as it with with Google. It's not for free. Right. We're mining your personal life, but it's <laughs> as far as I know, Airtable is not mining your personal life. Right. It, it actually is for free, and they're it's basically like a baker giving out free samples. They know that eventually somebody's going to come in, and you know buy donuts for their bread for their whole family dinner or something. So, uh, and apparently, apparently it's working out for them. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm super excited for the future too. I can't wait to see what comes next. I, I have one more question for you that I just thought of. Um, you're a photographer and that is awesome. Um, I myself have a degree in fine arts. So I'm just yeah. wondering if you have, or if you ever draw any parallels between designing a database and composing a photo, for example. I mean, the right, right brain, left brain thing I find really interesting. That's, that's an interesting question. What, what kind of a parallel are you thinking of? I don't know. Honestly, I, I like the duality of art and technology. And I like that Airtable kind of allows you to visualize that technology in a way. Um, I don't know. I just, I, I, I kind of think about it a lot in my own art practice. Um, yeah. so I just thought I'd throw it out there. Well, well I, I know that I, I could say this, that for, for practically everything in life, um, imagination is important. And imagination doesn't mean coming up with stuff out of nowhere. It means knowing what you can do and being able to visualize it. Right. Now, there are, this is an old cliche about photographers, that there are two kinds of photographers. There are makers and takers. And I'm more a taker, I will admit that. But I'm a taker because when I was when I was photographing, I'd be photographing a wedding or something, and the you know, the bride or the bride's father, somebody would come by and say, Have you got any good ones? And I'd say, I don't know, I gotta get back to my computer. I said, I I, I think I have a couple. I mean, I never tried to be negative to the client, but um, I had to get back to my computer. But sometimes I what I really liked about photography was when I saw something and I knew immediately that's a photograph. Exactly. One time I was sitting at my computer in my home, looking down the hallway through a door at my 12 year old daughter who was at her desk in her room studying. The light was coming in from her window and I said, that's a photograph. And my camera, I had a full frame camera sitting on my desk with me. I picked it up, I didn't move. I zoomed down the hallway and took it. It's one of the best photos I've ever taken. Wonderful. That's that's imagination, the ability to see something. Well, if you're working in Airtable or developing software of any kind, that that ability to know you, you got to know what you're doing. Right. You can't you can't imagine an Airtable base if you don't know what you can do with Airtable. Yes. You know, it's like I I can't imagine. Um, I, I have I'm not I'm not a very good cook, and I can't imagine a dish because I don't know what you can do with ingredients and, and meats and you know vegetables and spices. But I do know something about databases and so I can imagine, yeah, that could be a database problem and it could be solved in this way. In an Airtable, we could use the following views or, um, or, or uh, uh, you know, user interface elements or apps or add-ons. And so imagination there is also important. It's the ability to see yeah. what you're doing, but you've, you got to know, it's like you can't write a poem if you don't know how to use language. Right. So um, I, I think there is a parallel. It's not a visual parallel, although if you get into something like working with Stacker, where you have a lot more control over the visual design, then there's, there is an art element to it. Um, but uh, yeah, even with Airtable, where you have less control over the look of things, the ability to imagine what you're doing in advance makes life, uh, makes your work more fun and also helps when the better the, the best developers are people like the people who made Airtable who can imagine something that other people haven't imagined so exactly that was a wonderful answer thank you so much <laughs> okay it's a wonderful question i had never thought about that before <laughs> excellent so well, thank you so much william it's been a pleasure oh, my pleasure
Absolutely. And, and where can our listeners go to learn more about you? Well, there's not, I mean, <laughs> none of it's very interesting, but they can go to my, they can go to my website, which is uh, rucksack.tech, R-U-C-K-S-A-C-K, like, uh, you know, a backpack. Um, and it's a dot tech, not a dot com. Um, there's not much there, or they can try to follow me on, on Twitter. I have a, an account on Twitter, um, rucksack tech without a dot is my, is my handle on Twitter. And I, I post a little bit about Airtable and, and other database programs. Um, so and that's, those are, those are two places they can go. Wonderful. And we'll put links to those. Oh, they can go to, I don't know where they can go. They can go to William Porter dot. I think it's ME. Uh, okay. I see a couple of my photos. Excellent. Yeah, I would love that. I will definitely, I'll put links to everything in the show notes. Okay. All right. Great. Excellent. Well, William, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Allie. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to give it a like or hit us up on social at Built On Air. We always love to hear your comments and suggestions. And don't forget to subscribe to catch new episodes when they release. It helps us keep the podcast going.